Hi guys, Crafting Redstone here, and welcome back to another video. Now today's video is a bit of a concept. Now I um, was reading some stuff about DNA and things, and got a bit inspired, and I thought I bet I can recreate something a bit like that in Minecraft. So behind me, what we've got is a few different things to show you how you can use different blocks to represent how DNA works. Well, not how it works, but you can use different blocks to work a bit like DNA, which can be read by command blocks, and they're quite simple command blocks, although there is a lot of them. Um, and then output to different sort of data. So it's quite a compact way of storing information. So I hope you're excited for this, and what I'm going to be doing is showing you at first the concept behind it, um, moving on to a bit more advanced stuff, explaining how it works, showing you a way to use it, and how you can write your own sort of thing down here. So without further ado, let's get started. So the basic concept behind it is that you can store information in a flat plane, or it could even be 3D, but flat plane is probably easier, and you can write bits to it. So we've got a large se um, selection here. How many blocks have we got? We've got about eight, have we? I think so, eight. Um, and as you can see, we have coded information to it. So where we want it to be a one, we've placed a redstone block, and where it's zero, we've placed glass. So that's how we've coded it in. And this is a very, very basic version. And what it does, these command blocks over here, copy this plane here and paste it above these command blocks here. Now each of these command blocks have got certain commands in them, so this middle one for example clears the area in front of them, so as soon as it gets placed, it gets rid of. So you can see you didn't even really see it there, it just disappeared straight away. And that's what that does. And in these command blocks around, as you can see down here, it's got some letters in, they have slash say A, oh, um, B, C, D, oh, D, E, F, G, and H. So where these redstone blocks are, they're going to activate the command blocks below them. So this is the basic concept behind this DNA idea. This is a very basic one, it can only store binary. And at the moment you can see the central section is all in, and that's just so it gets rid of the blocks every time they get placed. So let's show you how this works. So first of all, we're going to uh, place a redstone block there. It's going to say A, B, C, D, E, F, G, oh, G, and H. You see it happens very fast and it just outputs the data in the form of text. So this is the basic concept and that just stores binary and just to mention you can put different blocks in so it doesn't have to just be two on each layer, you can put multiple in and just code it how you like and it doesn't have to be using the slash say command, you can do all sorts with it where I'll show you in a minute. So we press it now, it's going to say three letters at once. You can see C, F and A and that is the basic concept behind it. So let's move on to the bit more complex things. So before looking at the more complex like structures I've made here, we're going to do a bit of biology. So here in the text what we've got is a combination of how the colours relate to the proteins in real life and these are things what make up the DNA which encodes everything what is living pretty much. So yellow is thymine, blue is adenine, green is guanine and red is cytosine. So they're all proteins and how they mix up and things um, determines what the DNA is, like stands for sort of thing. So we try to recreate this in Minecraft. We've got red, green, blue, and yellow. And this system over here can read each one of those blocks and determine what it means and what to do with it. So let's have a look over here. Just to mention, these planes here, all of them have been three by three so far, but you can make them as big as you want. It just means that you'll need more command blocks over here. So first of all, this command copies the plane here. So it's three by three plane, it copies it over here. So in this gap, what happens, The this little one over here gets copied in and it looks something like this and go all the way around like that and there's going to be a blue block there as well but you'll notice that the redstone block is in the centre so what this does is first of all activate a command which is absolutely empty because it was empty it was it did have a command in earlier but it doesn't actually need to be there anymore so I got rid of it but I didn't want to move all these up so first of all it gets activated by this and you'll see it all disappears and you'll see all the blocks move up and down. So there's a few commands underneath this. First of all, there's this command. Now this puts glass in each one of these areas here. This puts glass just to replace everything. You can just see it puts a glass plane. And then the next one, what it does, is it copies certain blocks only into certain places up here. So it'll only copy the green blocks into this row here. It'll only copy the yellow blocks into this row here, I do believe. It'll only copy the blue blocks here and it'll only copy the red blocks here. So it splits it all up into different parts. Then what it does is place a redstone block 
on this layer here to activate all these commands. So it resets, it gets rid of all these and then place all the redstone blocks back in. So I'll show you that very quickly. Uh, let's press that one there. And it'll put, maybe not, if we put one on here, it'll put all the redstone blocks back in as you can see and get rid of everything. Now this just repeats for each type of like color. So it will just split up all the colors into these points up here. So that's what it does. And then there's some other commands up here I'll explain now. Now this command block here, first of all, tests to see if it's glass or hardened clay in this block here. So if it's glass, it, won it won't do anything and it'll just say glass was there but we expected stained hardened clay. So if it's hardened clay there, then this command will activate and activate the ones below it. Now for the green one for example, it doesn't actually do anything, it codes for 0, 0. Whereas the yellow one codes for 0, 1, the blue for 1, 0 and the red for 1, 1. So what this is going to do is it's going to set two air blocks here and here. But if it was yellow, for example, it would set what this one to redstone. And if it was the blue, it would set the other way around like that. And if it was the red, it would set it like this. So that's what it does. And each one of these kind of move along the line. So it starts here and it will put these two blocks here. Then it goes to the next one, which will put two blocks here and then it goes for the next one and so on and so forth putting on all the redstone blocks or glass depending on what's actually it's been encoded to so that's what it does it just measures the block to see what it is here i can demonstrate that very quickly let's just activate this and you'll see it's split it all up the green ones have gone here there's nothing on this row because no yellows the blue one's gone here and there's nothing on this one because it's red so it'll have detected that there's hardened clay successfully found block whereas this one said it's unsuccessful because it's found glass then these ones have acti activated below it and you'll see down here it's placed a single block here and filled all the other ones with air blocks and that is all it's done so far because there's only one thing it's telling to do in here and that is to refresh the screen so now I'm going to do a bit of an explanation of this line here so just like the code over here what we made using the redstone blocks this one has just been separated by a layer and used those four different blocks to represent the proteins found in DNA so here we've got green blocks and one blue block here on this one we've got different blocks you can see and you'll notice that all the way through them it's got redstone block and that redstone block is just to activate this one here so the redstone block got placed and then it all starts so here what it's telling it to do is telling it to put blue block up here so it's going to measure it well, it's going to tell it to put a blue block there and it's going to get moved up here. So this one is currently setting to test for hardened clay. And then if it finds it, it's going to place that block down there. So that's how you basically code with it. Um, just go over it again. I'll get the blocks and demonstrate. So here are the different blocks you can use and their values. So the green, like the guanine, represents 0, 0. The yellow, like the thymine, represents 1. The blue, like the adenine, represents 2 and the red like the side scene represents three so they're the blocks you can use to display the binary now it's very important what order you put these in because this counts for the first two blocks this counts for the um, second two blocks third two blocks fourth two blocks fifth two blocks sixth two blocks and um, seventh two blocks so if we move over here and there's also the eighth two blocks around there so i thought i'd just clarify a bit on how you use the different colors of clay so in front of me we've got binary, so we've got 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. That was a bit of a mouthful. And as you can see I've split it up into sections of 2 below it. So now we're going to encode each one of these sections of 2 into one of these clay blocks. So let's start over here. So we've got 0, 1. So 0, 1 corresponds to yellow, so we'll place a yellow. 1, 0 corresponds to blue. 1, 0 again corresponds to blue, 1, 1 corresponds to red, 0, 0 corresponds to green, green again, and then we've got blue, and we've got red, and then we've got yellow. So as you can see we've got a bit of an order there, yellow, blue, blue, red, green, green, blue, red, yellow. So if we're then going to put that into over the little circle over there, probably got a few too many for it, but what you do is yellow, blue, blue, oh, a few too many blues there. Blue, blue, what's next? Red, green, green, blue, red, and then we've just run out of the last one, so we'll have to start a new layer or something. But then if you wanted to activate the code, you just put a redstone block in the middle. 
and you just copy that across and it'll activate whatever that binary means to the computer and the computer will run that binary. So that is basically what you're doing with the different Claude Clays and that's just a bit of a clarification on how it works so I hope that's helpful. So let's try this command what I've already put in, let's get rid of these blocks. Let's try the command over here, so by pressing this it's going to reset the screen. So it did place a block here but because there's another code in it it tells it to get rid of the entire line just so it gets rid of it each time you can start a new command. So we're going to try this next one, you'll see what it does if we look over here. Pop the block there, you can see it's placed blocks in certain places and then gets rid of them. And then it's hopefully going to play, um, outline some blocks in here, so this is actually going to draw a smiley face. And if we press this one here, activate it, it's going to copy it in. And you'll see it's put some blocks down there and split it all up into its relevant parts for it to read. And finally this one here, we can probably stand on top and get a good angle of it. You just watch down there, you'll see it's placed some blocks in and it's drawn this smiley face over here. So as you can see, you can use different combinations to mean different things which a computer can then read. This is a very basic one, you can hook it up to all sorts of things and use it in computer ROMs and all sorts of things. It will be very interesting to see what you can do with it. Um, so that is basically what you can do with it. Now we're going to have a look at how you can make stuff of your own to code into it. So this is going to be a bit of a demonstration here of how you can use the different bits to mean things. So just clear it again and show you what this little bit of code does. This should make an alternate pattern. And let's activate this one now. And activate this one. So to show you can do a wide variety of things. And because there's only three lines of code, that's all we need to do. So it's making an alternate pattern over there. So is the potential for this is quite massive and it's quite a fun thing to mess around with. So there's a bit of code there. Now we're gonna get rid of it all and I'm gonna explain what you can do. So if we go back to earlier, if you remember the first block counts for these two blocks here, the second blocks count for these two blocks, the third block counts for these two blocks, fourth fifth and sixth and seventh count for those blocks so we can use that over here so let's say we don't want to do anything but um, clear the screen which is this one here so what we need to do is count along so one two three four five six so on the sixth we want to activate the second line and second line only which is a two in binary I do believe so Oh, it's oh, a zero one in binary is a two. So we just want to activate that line, and we also want to clear the selection afterwards. So we want on the seventh and sixth block, we want two twos. So we come along, so we go one, two, three, four, five, and we know that blue represents two, and this is a sixth and seventh block. So we'll place two blocks there, and then a green there, as green signifies zero, yellow signifies one, blue um, signifies two, and red signifies three. So if we press this one here now and activate it, you'll see it will copy it over and hopefully clear the screen. So it's done exactly what I want and cleared the screen, although it's already cleared, we can see it placing the blocks down there. So let's make a pattern now. So the pattern what we're going to make is that the, all the edge bits are retracted on this display. So there we go, it's done. And that is how you can use the DNA to write code in a quite compact way, uh, except from this big tower of command blocks there. They are quite simple commands, and this concept has got a lot of potential. I'd love to see what happens with it if anybody does use it in any redstone build to make computers, etc. Um, yeah, it's pretty interesting, pretty interesting concept. Might not necessarily have too many uses, it's just a cool concept which relates a little bit to real life like DNA. So, I guess I'm going to end off the video here. I hope you've enjoyed this bit of an obscure redstone tutorial um, on this concept. And I hope you've enjoyed it and learned a little bit about biology today with that sort of thing. So I guess without further ado, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye from Crafting Redstone. Now, here we've got a 5x5 five five screen, which means we have 5x coordinates, 5y coordinates, and a reset button. So we're going to be going through this.